use blue on the bottom and black on the top. So the next step, take some of my blue bucktail. Same thing, don't be afraid to work with a large bunch. You want to use a good amount of material. Get rid of that soft under hair. You can actually use a, a comb or a brush to get rid of that if you want to. And there are deer hair combs that'll make this a little bit easier and certainly a little bit neater. I'm tying at a fly tying show, as, as I'm sure you can hear in the background. Cut off those tapered tips and the excess thickness on the bottom. That's about the diameter of the fly that I want to use, so that's how much I want to, material I want to use. Using two wraps, I want to go ahead and bring that material on the bottom and leave it to hang. I'm not going to pull that tight yet. Because I'm going to stack the material, I want to be able to have a clean line, so I want the black to go on the back of it. Now I can go ahead and lay that on top of the, the blue, give a pull, and now I have black on back, blue on the bottom, we're beginning to stack two colors. This is, I'm not doing this with any real sense of precision because I'm not trying to tie a bass bug where I need a real precise line, but I want a black and blue effect from dorsal to ventral, and I don't mind if there's some modeling along the sides. I want this to look very natural. Go ahead and spin that back, advance your thread, and we're ready for the next bunch that's going to do that. Um, with this gel spun, because this is a gel spun, it's probably seven pound test or so, so I can really torque down on it. The other thing you're going to notice about this fly that's a little bit different is I'm not going to use my hair stacker the way I would if I were tying a, a topwater bass bug. I don't necessarily want this particular deer hair head just tight as cork because this is a fly that's designed to be fished on the bottom. I want it to absorb water so getting that real tight packing is not as important. Once again get rid of the tips get rid of the butts. Now we can go ahead holding that on the far side this time. Just a couple of wraps to hold that underneath. Go to the black and you just repeat the same process. We've got black on the back. I'm pulling that really nice and tight. I'm working my thread out to the front. Now we're going to come in with a hair stacker. Once again, I'm not going to really pack that super, super tight, but push that back just a little bit so that I have enough density there so that I can really trim it. And you're beginning to see how this is going to work out. A blue belly, a black back, and now we're going to do a blue front on this just to add a little bit of fun. All right, now we're ready to spin that last bunch of deer hair there. Bring this back up. Now, for this one, I'm going to spin a full spin of this, two or three wraps. I've got the deer hair next to me. As I begin to pull on it, that's all I have to do is allow that deer hair to naturally travel all the way around. And you can see that we had 360 degree as that deer hair spun around the hook shank. Spinning it on this hook is a little bit tough because of the return eye, but that actually makes doing a, a stacked color a little bit easier because I have a platform to separate the two, so it gives me a nice line. So choose your hook based on the effect that you want to. Once I've got that in place, we're gonna go ahead, pack that back. One more little bunch of blue just to fill that out in the front. And then we're going to begin my favorite part of deer hair, which is the trimming. So, two loops, get that deer hair spun around, we're good to go. Pack that back in. Now, one of the things that you're going to notice is it would be very hard for me to get in there and whip finish with that kind of a tight uh, finish right there. I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to use a whip or a half hitch tool. Because I've got gel spun, I can take two spins around that, allow that to slide off the end of the half hitch tool and really crank down. That's a two uh, turn whip finish. I'm going to do that two turn whip finish two, three times. Really crank down on that. That is not going to come apart. Now I can get rid of that gel spun thread. Now we're ready for the fun part. The first thing I want you to do is take this deer hair bug that we've just tied. I want you to hold the hook point up and right at you so that we're looking straight down that hook point. Take a double-sided razor. That is the right tool to trim deer hair. You can't do this with scissors. Holding that double-sided razor carefully, I'm going to make a flat cut from front to back. A fresh razor will slide right through that deer hair and it'll make a beautiful clean cut. You can only get about two flies out of a double-edged razor, then just go ahead and throw it away. Razors are really cheap. I want that to be nice and flat from the front to the back, not tapering in any angle whatsoever. Now, take the fly, take that beautiful skirt that we worked so hard to tie in, make sure that kind of hold that back out of the way so you don't accidentally cut it. 
looking at the fly this way, I'm going to take my razor and I'm going to cut up and away from me. So now I've got a wedge shape. Now I'm going to do the same thing on both sides. And we begin to see we begin to see now that this is taking on that characteristic toad-shaped head of a catfish. Now, you can continue to carve like this using the, holding this in your hand. I'm going to put it back in the vise so that we can make this a little bit easier to film. Now I'm going to take this, just using this razor blade, I'm going to rotate the vise. I'm going to begin to carve out that nice toad-shaped head that I want to imitate a catfish. That fly is really ready to fish. There's no reason for me to, to continue to trim uh, anymore. And there you go. That is the trough bullhead, a great little imitation of a bullhead, a great imitation of Taurus Flavus, a mad tom, a very common bait fish that's in all of the warm water streams in Ohio and in fact across the nation. This is a fabulous fly for steelhead. Let's not forget this was actually designed as a trout fly. So tie this from size 2 up to size 5 aught, put it on your sinking tip line, put it on a 10 pound fluorocarbon tippet, get out there in the water while it's still cold, and tight lines. We'll see you in the spring.